Hello, you wonderful people. We are continuing our Next.js crash course journey. In today's video, we're going to take a look how to create this top navigation in our Next.js application, as well as add these uh, page placeholders. And it is going to be mobile menu, which is always nice. Now, I just want to start this by saying that this is not a HTML and CSS course. This is course specifically talking about Next.js topics. So to make our job easier, we are using Shad CN UI to use some of the pre-built components that they have, which is pretty awesome. And in terms of our theme, instead of building things from scratch, I used a page builder from Reweb, which allows you to use a page builder to create a layout for your website and easily export the code. For instance, if I want to export this top navigation, I could click on here and I could see all the code snippets and all the settings that I need. And I will provide all of this for you so this way you don't have to worry about it. But I just wanted to add this caveat instead of work focusing on how to build those components, we're literally going to use this template that I have and I will provide you with code snippets. And our goal for this video is to start by creating a corporate business website that has a landing page with a couple of different items, as well as create a blog section and implement our tagging, our search, as well as pagination, and have a single post blog view to display our articles. And in the future, we're going to talk about how to set up authentication and registration, as well as how to use social providers to sign up. But today we're going to continue building this top navigation, which will have this mobile nav functionality. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you're trying to figure out where do I find the code snippets, you could go to codingafter30.com. I don't even remember the name of my own websites and you could click on sign up, click sign in. You don't have to create a user account. You could use the Stubby account and this is going to take you to your lessons. You could see all the other courses that are available. Um, when you sign in with your own email, you could add them to your likes and unlikes. But with that being said, you could go and click on the course. And currently we have two lessons. Lesson one is completed. So if you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. And now we are on lesson two. Because I'm recording this lesson right now, there is no video here, but I did provide the basic snippets that we're going to use to help us out that you could find here in the description. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. And here I have my terminal open. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my project in VS Code. Now that we are in NVS code, we're going to start by just updating a couple of files to make sure that our styling matches our project that we're building. And we're going to update a couple of different files. The first one, it's going to be found inside our app and we're going to update our global CSS file here. You could find the code snippets on our website. So here I'm going to go ahead and copy the global CSS styles. And I'm going to select everything here and replace. Now that's done. That's pretty cool. It just added some of the styles that I got from Reweb, including the font family that we're going to include in our project. Next, we're going to navigate to our tailwind.config.ts file. And we have some basic theming here, but we're going to replace it by the theming that we're using from Reweb. And we're not actually doing much. If you take a look here, I am importing the theme here. And so you could copy the whole thing or you could just uh, copy this import, which I'm gonna do for brevity. I'm gonna go ahead and import it. And finally, we're going to add that import to the theme. What we're looking for is fonts, which I believe I did in the end here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy. And that's gonna go under our extents. You could literally just put it here in front. And now that is done. We have one last thing to do. When I was using Reweb, we need to add this hook because this is what some of the Reweb components rely on. So let's go ahead into our source folder, into the libs. We're going to create a folder called hook and we're going to add this file, uselockbody.ts. So in our source lib, create a new folder called hooks. And inside the hook folder, create a new file called uselockbody dot ts and go ahead copy the sample code and paste it in now restart your application yarn dev and if you did it correctly you should see that we have this dark mode being applied and currently we don't have much we just have our top nav that's just the div our home page and our footer and i think last time we did created our about page 
So taking a look at our project, if we go to app, if we go to our main page.tsx file, this here is our root layout. And a lot of times for my Next.js application, anything that's a route, this is a route. I like to call it home route. So I'm gonna update it here. And let's delete this button because we don't need it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that import. Perfect. So now I'm gonna go ahead just for brevity, copy this and let's go to our about page and I'm gonna paste this in, perfect. And we did call it about route, this is perfect. So let me just say about, and we don't need the import react, it's done automatically behind the scenes. So let's copy that. So within the app folder, create a new folder, call it blog, and inside here, create a new file called page.tsx and paste in the code. And we're gonna call this blog route and we're gonna change this to blog. So looking at our project, we could navigate to home, we could navigate to about, and of course we could navigate to blog, perfect. So if we take a look at our root layout page, Notice that we are hard coding our top nav and our footer here as a placeholder. So let's go ahead and create our top navigation component. So let me close all those unnecessary open items. We're gonna to go to source, inside components. We have our UI folder, which is where all of your Shet CN components go. We currently have one installed called button, but inside components here, I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it custom. And this is where all of our own components will go. Inside here, let's create a new folder and we're going to call it navigation. Look at our notes. We already created our homepage, about page and blog page. Let's go ahead and create our top navigation. First, let's go ahead and create this file and paste this code in, and then we'll go ahead and go over through the code. So inside our navigation folder, create a new file. We're going to call it top navigation.tsx and we're going to paste in our snippet. So this is going to be a server react component because we're not saying it's client by saying use client. By default, all of your components are server components unless you specify. We're going to add this nav link item and mobile nav bar wrapper in just a moment, but here I am just hard coding the value for our nav items. Our items going to show our homepage, our about page and our blog page. If we scroll down here, we have our basic header, we have our link tag. This SVG here is going to be the logo for our website. Coding After 30 is the name, but you could change it to whatever you want. And we will eventually get this from our API. So this way you don't have to hard code the names. If we scroll down, we have our top navigation where we're just going ahead and looping through our items and rendering our nav link. If we scroll down, we have our call to action and we're just gonna see that in just a second. And then we also have our mobile menu with where we're rendering our mobile menu links. And you're probably wondering, what is this mobile navbar wrapper? So we're going to create that next. And I just want you to keep this in mind while we're creating this. Notice how here we're not using use client directive because majority of your code could be server react components. And anytime you need any dynamic functionality, like a button that takes a on-click event or using any of the React hooks, you would make that as a client-side component. But instead of making all of the code here client-side component, what I decided to do is make my mobile nav bar wrapper be client-side, and that way I could only make my code that's dynamic or has on-click events to run client side and everything else could be server side, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do that next. So let's create inside our navigation, new file, and we're going to call it mobile nav bar wrapper .tsx. Let's go ahead and grab our code snippet and copy, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in. Wanna make sure that we fix this import. We did just add a use lock body, but we may just have to re-import it again. That was in libs, inside hooks, and it's called use lock body. Perfect. And take a look how we're using use client directive. And the reason why we're doing it is because we have a couple of React hooks as well as use state. You could only use state or React hooks in client side components. That's why we're using this use client directive to say, hey, make this component run client side. And what I'm doing is I'm passing all my nav uh, items here as children. 
So this way I don't have to make all of my code use client, but only the code that has some interactivity like this button that's calling this on click event. Finally, if you go back to our top navigation, I am using that this Neflink item. And again, the reason I did not have it here directly because our Neflink item, as you'll see in a second, also has interactivity and that's only possible in our use client component. So instead of making this whole component US use client, I only took the pieces that rely on client side JavaScript and make those as separate components. So inside our navigation, let's create a new file. We're going to call it nav link item.tsx and let's go ahead and copy this snippet from our notes and paste it in. So again, I am using the use client directive and the reason is because I'm using use path name hook from next navigation. This is only available to you use client side and we're using it to check the path of the URL and see if this link should be active or not. So if we scroll down, notice I'm getting path name. From our props, I'm able to get the href for the link and I'm checking, does the path name include the href? If it does, this must be active. And here I have a little helpful function where I'm passing the active state and it's just returning the style for the active item versus non-active item. And again, the reason why I made this separate is because we have some basic interactivity and we're relying on the use path name that can only work in client side JavaScript component. And that's why we created it as a separate component. Now that we have all these components inside our navigation, let's create a new file. We're gonna call it index.ts. And here let's import our mobile navbar wrapper. So I'm gonna say import mobile navbar wrapper. And next let's import our nav link items. And here we're just going to export our mobile nav bar wrapper and our nav link item. Perfect. So now let's go back to our top navigation, fix our import. And now everything is set up. So the last step that we have left is to go ahead and import our top navigation component inside our layout. So navigate back to your app under layouts and let's replace this navigation with our top navigation. Perfect. And if everything is done correctly, you should be able to see your navigation. Let me zoom out a little bit. We have our home, we have our about link, we have our blog, which navigates to appropriate page. If we increase the size or make the screen smaller, notice we have our mobile navigation and everything's working as according. Nice, now that we have our top navigation, it'd be cool if we don't hard code the name, for instance, coding after 30 and the uh, nav items that we have, it'll be awesome if we have an endpoint that we could hit that's going to be responsible for this data. Now we can have this application make direct call to a database where we store our navigation items, but I much rather prefer using a headless CMS that allows us to easily store that data. For this course, we don't have to create this portion of it. I'll have this available to you to use as an API. But if you're interested, you could check out my Strapi 5 crash course that I am currently recording as well while building this Next.js project. Inside your headless CMS, your editor or you yourself or any content manager will be able to add that data from the admin panel. For instance, our global settings page will have the information that's required for our top navigation. So let me show you by example. I'm just gonna call this global settings responsible for our top nav and footer. And now let me create a, our top navigation. Our logo title, I'm going to say coding after 30, and it's gonna take us to our homepage and it's a link. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add nav items. So we're going to have a link to take us to the homepage. We're gonna have another item, which is gonna take us to our about section. And then we are also going to have our blog page and it's gonna take us to our blog. And finally, our website has a call to action. So we're gonna add that button as well. 
and we're going to say it's going to be called CTA. We could call it whatever you want. And I'm going to have this link to my codingafter30.com website. And because it's an external site, I'm going to say true. And we're going to say we want primary styling. Now that I have my data here in Strapi, I'm going to click publish. And again, you don't have to worry about it, but I'm just showing you this in case you're interested to see how a headless CMS has worked. You could definitely check out that course. And I'm just going to make this endpoint available to us publicly by going to users permissions, roles, public, and I'm going to enable for global settings to allow my API to find this endpoint. Now I'm gonna go ahead, copy my deployed project. I'm gonna save the changes here. And in my terminal, I have a cool plugin called Postman. I already have this request saved here. So I'm gonna go ahead, get global page. The only difference, instead of using local host, I wanna make a call to my deployed project. And now when I click send, you're going to see that I'm getting all of my top navigation data. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and go back to our layout. And let's go inside our top navigation component, go to definitions. And in the bottom here, and for now, we're just going to hard code it. We're kind of going to get the idea of it going. And I'm going to say const data. And we're going to paste in our JSON object. And this is exactly what we're going to get from our headless CMS. So I'm gonna keep this as is. What's cool inside your server React components, you are actually able to make calls to get the data. For instance, I could write a function. It's going to be a, a sync function. And I like calling it loader. That's just how I do it. And inside here, all we're going to do is return our data, which at the moment is hard-coded, but we'll be able to make a fetch request to our Strapi endpoint to get the data. But we're gonna save it for next lesson. But for now, I just wanna show you the power of Next.js and server components is by making our server component uh, sync, we are able to await our data from the loader. And now what I'm able to do is say console dir, I'm going to say data, and we're going to say depth of null, which basically will destructure all the objects, so we'll be able to see all of our console log. And because this is happening on the server, we're going to see this in our terminal. And so you could see here, we're getting our data from our loader. And in the next video, we'll replace this to get our data from our API, but I just wanted to show it to you here today to kind of give you a taste of what's coming next. I hope you're enjoying this lesson. In the next video, we're going to take a look how to load data in our Next.js project from an API. And if you have any questions, you could definitely ask them in the comments. And let me know if you want me to bring back my Discord and if you want to be able to ask questions there, because I will do it. But in the meantime, happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video.